Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday. It is the Earth Master out here, April 10th, 2024, about 11.54 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 2.2 into the area of California. Looks like it's just right off of the uh, San Andreas Fault here. Uh, what else we got going on here across the uh, globe far as the last 24 hours go? It looks like uh, the largest one so far. Today is a 5.4 in the area of China. This region has been seeing a little bit of uptick here recently. Uh, nothing of abnormal activity, just a little bit of swarming in the last week or so. If we look at the last seven days of activity up here across this area of China, showing uh, a handful of earthquakes in the 5 range couple fours in there as well so just kind of continue to watch that area it is uh, quite the active region for seismicity uh, over here across the uh, philippines and the taiwan area a couple smaller quakes there this morning it looks like a 5.2 aside from that most of this activity out here today is from well on the map is from yesterday uh, getting a little clustering going on here across the northern edge of the java trench just off the coast there of sumatra Quite a few fours and threes coming into this area listed there on the earthquake 3d globe not showing up here on the uh, usgs map not for sure why they're not reporting that but uh it is there on the globe so we'll continue to watch that it is a little bit of advancement going on here from our last week or so of activity which has been roughly about here eastward along this plate boundary the java trench subduction zone area but now it looks like we may be getting uh a little bit of that migration going on here so we'll continue to watch that area very capable of producing some large earthquakes in that region uh, over here across the uh it looks like there's a little bit bigger quake there in the philippines let's see here that's going to be this 5.2 into the area of the philippine trench pretty shallow earthquake though right at the surface levels uh, for that quake 5.27 kilometers deep Across the area down here looks like some further deep movement across the tonga trench and a handful of smaller quakes there across the new zealand area once again although i see a, a deeper activity quake there three pointer into um looks like it's at underneath the north island area once again so continue to watch that region hawaii pretty quiet a handful of smaller quakes out there today but uh, really nothing major going on out here uh, there's a couple of those earthquakes being reported Mostly ones and twos across the area of Alaska. A handful of quakes up here across the Aleutian Trench once again. Although, uh, let's see here. Let's see what we got for today. A couple smaller ones and twos out there around Anchorage. Most of this activity here from yesterday. Uh, looks like there was another four pointer just after one o'clock my time, local time, for a 4.8. Across the California area, there's that uh, earthquake coming into the USGS map now, 2.2. Again, that uh, looks like it is on the San Andreas Fault here, near the Santa Cruz Mountain section. Just south of here, of course, is the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Kind of discussed this last night uh, in terms of the potential reoccurrence intervals of large quakes here. Looking at about every 22 years or so, this area around the uh, San Andreas Fault near Parkfield has regular intervals of about 6.0 earthquakes every 22 years and the last one was back in 2004 interesting article if you didn't get a chance to check it out from the livescience.com site so we'll continue to watch that uh, aside from that uh, looks like a little bit of movement here off the Hayward or Calaveras faults gonna be a 3.0 about 1 o'clock this morning Again, it still looks uh, like, like it's quite active out here, specifically in this region. So we'll continue to watch that area of California for some potential further movement there. Southern California, fairly quiet, aside from some microquake activity. The southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet. Not a whole lot uh, showing up here. Uh, way up into Montana, they did see a 3.5 coming in uh, late last night, it looks like, out around the Santa Rita area, very close to the border up here with Canada. Uh, let's check out the Yellowstone 
overview here real quick, see what we got. Make sure this is the most recent map. It is. And as far as earthquake activity, it looks as though a couple smaller microquakes up here around the um, area of Maple Creek. Aside from that, it looks uh, fairly quiet out here across Yellowstone National Park for now. And the rest of the country, as you can see, a handful of earthquakes, including out here around New Jersey once again. The latest one shows a 2.6 this morning, about 7 o'clock here, my time, West Coast time. That, uh, well, probably up there around almost 50 earthquakes so far in the last week around this area of New Jersey that's seen that 4.8 and many other smaller quakes in this area. But things are cal kind of calming down a little bit, not uh, looking at a whole bunch of quakes compared to in the days past. Puerto Rico area. Twos and threes are the magic number, getting some swarming going on out here. Again, this is a very typical, though, across the uh, Mariotas Trough. Down into this area a little bit, about 17 kilometers or so. The Atlantic Ocean, got one earthquake out here in the northern mid-Atlantic Ridge from late last night. That's going to be a 4.8. Aside from that, uh, some smaller quick activity here around the Azores. Iceland looks fairly quiet in terms of any major activity across the Mediterranean. Got twos and threes out there once again. A little 4.8 out here across the plate boundary down south here of uh, Africa. South America, look at that deep activity here. Looks like we did see a five-pointer out here into the uh, Peru Chile Trench underneath the Bolivia area, 206 kilometers deep for that five-pointer. Continue to watch areas upstream, though. It looks like uh, there is already a little bit of adjustment following that deep activity. Look at this. Here's that five-pointer deep into the subduction zone, immediately followed up here, uh, in this area by a 4.3 about an hour or so later. So we continue to watch this bend area. Quite a bit of a strain out here recently in terms of deeper quakes and uh, some surface adjustment going on there. All right, let's check the live from Iceland site here real quick. See what we got for the latest activity there across Iceland. Still seeing some fountaining going on there. Quite a bit of lava continuing to splash out of this main crater area. Let's see if we got a little different view here from the webcams. Um, this is going to be a more of a distant view. Still active, it looks like, folks. Not... Uh, doesn't look like much has changed. I've not seen any increase in activity. Hasn't really come to a halt yet. Just continuing to see that free flow of activity from the areas below, the deeper areas below, up to the surface region. This uh, update from the Icelandic Met Office was put out yesterday. Talking about the, um, the slowing down, so to speak, of the lava flow from the main vent. But it has not halted. It has not completely stopped. So we'll continue to watch that earthquake activity around this area. Here's the latest 12-hour map. Shows about 33 earthquakes scattered out and about throughout the area. A little bit down here south here across this rift zone as well. Uh, I think we'll continue to see this eruption linger as long as we got that further supply of magma from the deeper areas below. And this could uh, continue for a little while. All right, uh, space weather activity. We'll jump into this real quick and see uh, what's going on for the space weather from solarham.net is the site. If you notice right here, we're getting out of that B flare class up into the C flare class really quickly. A lot of uh, spikiness going on here, indicating an active region out here. And I believe most of that activity is coming from a far side sunspot if you look over here on the uv filter ray this area back over here i'm starting to wonder if that's going to be uh, our old sunspot uh, 3615 let's look here it's not this region that's a region behind that looks quite active most of the sunspots out here that are currently facing the earth are relatively stable but there's that active region out here way out on the northeastern limb that looks like uh, things are going to get active here 
Let me see. I think I already see it. Not 36.15 yet, but it's going to be this area right here that we're starting to see crests around the eastern limb. There's old sunspot 3615, which was actually old sunspot 3590. So now it's going to be coming around for a third time uh, around the sun. Uh, and it will be here in a, in a few days or so on the earth-facing side of the sun here across the eastern limb. This is 3615, the culprit of many inflares here recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, when it was on the earth-facing side of the sun. That's coming back around the bend here. It'll be here in a, uh, a couple days or so. Is this? Yeah, this is a little bit more active or a little bit more updated map. This is 4.9. Even though it's a little old, it's newer than the image I just showed you guys. So it's going to be right about here, this uh, newer active region that uh, is elevating the sea flare activity right now. 36.15 is uh, getting pretty close here. We should get a better perspective of it in the days ahead. It still looks quite uh, large out here. Notice this huge active area. Either way, go from a uh, pretty boring sunspot activity to uh, very active here soon. I feel either way it's showing here on the uh, solar flux chart that we're getting things going here. So overall threat right now shows 50% chance for a C flare. We are up, up into that category. 10% for M flare, X flare around 1% or so. No major roars in the forecast. Storm Prediction Center got uh, pretty serious risks for some severe weather out here across the Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida area for a decent tornado chance out here. Kind of elevated, 15% chance. That's in the hatched area as well. So if you're down here in portions of the south today, keep your eyes on the sky. Keep your weather radio in hand as well so you can get notified on any important weather alerts out there for that tornado potential. Also some big time wind threat as well. 45% chance of seeing some significant wind damage. Uh, as we look into the future here, these guys are showing the potential of a 30% chance for some severe weather on day six. Now that's going to be on Monday of next week, Monday into Tuesday, it looks like. Or actually Monday into Monday night. This is going to be 1200Z. That's a few days out, but these guys are already issuing a severe weather outlook here in their legend. 30% chance. That's pretty decent here, but a broad area of even further potential severe thunderstorms on day six. Again, that's going to be Monday of next week. And that's got to do with this low pressure system here that's going to come in to the west coast and stir things up here, bring us some rain and colder temperatures. And then as it heads towards the Oklahoma area, this is going to be, um, this almost looks like it's going to be a nighttime event. So if we look at Tuesday at 00Z time, that's going to be 6 p.m. Monday. And then as we go to about midnight, that's when the severe weather tends to pick up here. So this could be a nighttime severe weather event, which is not the best at all. Of course, you know, mostly when people are sleeping out here, it's not a good time to see uh, that severe weather kick up. But we'll continue to watch that. That's a pretty decent setup there with uh, the low pressure positioned up here across the South Dakota area, uh, Nebraska actually, South Dakota up here. Either way, uh, we'll cover that a little bit later as we get closer to this date. It's a massive low pressure sensor. And uh, behind that, some colder air, another severe weather event as we head into Friday. And uh, I guess we'll just see how things play out here. Very active season so far i got an earthquake out here in texas coming in a 4.4 earthquake looks like about 25 minutes or so ago near the big spring area of texas this area is littered with a whole bunch of oil fields i've been out here a time or two and uh goodness uh they're everywhere you can see them when you're flying over here at 30,000 feet you can see them from google earth you can see them from the ground if you're traveling Massive amounts of oil fields out here in pumping operations. Wastewater disposal facilities as well. 4.4. 4. 
decent size earthquake out here, about seven kilometers deep, uh, was felt out there around the Big Spring area, Midland, even over towards the Odessa area of Texas. So things stirring up out here a little bit. Not unusual. Uh, we always tend to get these earthquakes out here in the oil fields on any given day or any given week out here. Aside from that, folks, we'll continue to watch things here, see how the day plays out. It is uh, Wednesday, so we're halfway through the work week. Friday, right around the corner, I suppose. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. Got quite a bit of school stuff I got to get caught up on, so we'll see you guys later. Have a good day.